To get started with Citrix VDI in a box, I first went to Citrix.com, uh, to Products and Solutions, then to VDI in a box, and right here I clicked on the Try It link. I filled out the simple registration form here, I got an email in my inbox, and then from there I was able to download uh, one of three versions. There's three versions, one for each of the three different hypervisors they support, uh, Hyper-V, VMware vSphere, or Citrix Zen Server. So after I downloaded the appropriate zip file for VMware vSphere, because that's the hypervisor I'm going to try this on, in fact the free version of ESXi, I went ahead and extracted it, and then here's the files. What you end up with is this OVF, this Open Virtualization Format Virtual Appliance that you can import into VMware vSphere. So I'll go down to my vSphere client, and then from here I'll go up to File, then down to Deploy OVF Template. I'll browse for the template. There's the OVF right there. I'll click Open. Next. It finds the VDI Manager for ESX. I'll click Next here. And pretty much I'm just going to take all the defaults. I will give it a new name. I'll call it VDI in a box. Uh, I'll put it in uh, one particular data center. And I'll put it on one of my uh, hosts, ESX host number one. I won't put it in a resource pool at this time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the local storage of that host just because I'm testing this in my lab and there's plenty of space free. Uh, let's go ahead and do a thinly provisioned uh, virtual disk again because this is a test. You wouldn't want to do that in production. I'll click next here, connect it to the default network. And then at this point we're ready to complete. I'll go ahead and power it on after deployment and click finish. All right, now it's creating the new virtual machine and deploying the OVF template for VDI in a box. Uh, because it's about a gig, this will take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the recording be right back. With our deployment successfully completed here, I'll just click Close, and notice that we've got a new virtual appliance here called VDI in a box. So I'm going to click on that, and you can see here it has an IP address. It actually got this via DHCP, I can tell by the range on my network. Let's go ahead and open the console, although technically this isn't required, but I would like to see what the console looks like. So this is it. We get a uh, basic login prompt here, and it tells us to go to HTTPS colon slash slash the IP address that it got via DHCP slash admin. So we'll close that out, and let's go over to our web browser. So here in our web browser, I'll go to https colon slash slash 10.0.1.111 slash admin. Okay, it tells me it's untrusted. I understand the risk. I'll confirm the security exception. And here we go. This looks promising. We get Citrix VDI in a box. I'm going to go ahead and log in with the default credentials. Those are VDI admin, and the default password is all lowercase k-a-v-i-z-a. -A. I'll click log in here. And here we go. It tells us, thank you for choosing VDI in a box. We want this to be fast and pleasant. Uh, the basic setup process here is to set up your hypervisor in the VDI in a box grid, generate a base desktop image, generate a template from the base image, and then assign users to the desktops. Sounds easy enough. So let's go ahead and get started here uh, to set up our hypervisor. First, we'll need hypervisor credentials. Credentials for Active Directory, if you're using Active Directory. And then a reserved IP address for the VDI in a box manager. Sounds good. We'll click Continue. Next up, we're being asked for the IP address of our VMware vSphere server. VDI in a box has detected that we're using vSphere. And this would be the actual IP address and a root username credentials for the ESXi host that the VDI in a box virtual machine is running on. So in my case, it's 10.0.1.11. Root is the username, and I'll type in the password there. Let's see if I got it right. There we go. We successfully connected to the ESXi host. Let's go ahead and select the data store. I'm going to put it on the local data store for now. Let's pretend I don't even have a SAN. The network label is just going to be VM network, the default. I'll click Next here. At this point, it says we have successfully configured our VDI in a box server. 
And uh, wow, that was really easy. What, just like two screens and we're done. So now it says if you want to create a new VDI in a box grid, you can just click next here. Since this is a brand new server, a brand new install, that's what we're going to do. However, let's say that you wanted to scale and provide additional virtual desktop capacity out of VDI in a box, you would go ahead and join an existing VDI in a box server. Or if you were looking to provide high availability by adding another host, again, you would join an existing VDI in a box grid. In our case, this is a brand new install. So I'll select to create a new VDI in a box grid and click next. Let's give this grid a name. We'll call it uh, the Wired Brain Coffee VDI-1, or uh, let's call it Grid 1. How about that? And then here we need to select a user database. So it's either going to be a VDI in a box workgroup, or if you have a Microsoft Active Directory infrastructure, you can use that. In my case, I do. So I'm going to type in 10.0.1.20 here. That's the IP address of my domain controller, my DNS server. The domain name is wiredbraincoffee.com. And then I'm going to type in the administrative credentials here. Let's see if I can type those right. Um, I can also choose to use vCenter here if I wanted to do that. In my case, I do have vCenter. So I'll go ahead and add that. Why not, right? Let's give it a try here. I'll click Next. And at this point, it says we're almost done. It asks you if you have reserved a dedicated IP address for the VDI in a box manager. Basically, it's wanting to know if you're going to use a static IP or a dynamic IP. We're just going to say yes here because uh, this is my lab infrastructure. I'm using DHCP, but it's not going to change. Um, I'll just say done here. And now it's prompting us to generate a base desktop image. So the base desktop image is going to be the virtual machine that we create brand new from scratch. We install an operating system applications and so forth. And then all the other virtual machines, all the other virtual desktops that connect, um, their virtual machines will be cloned from that base desktop image. Basically, a template will be created from that. And then every time a new user connects, um, they'll get their own virtual machine based on that template. So to do this, it says, you know, make sure DHCP is set up, that you should have a running Windows XP or Windows 7 virtual machine already on the hypervisor to copy as the base desktop image, and then credentials for the domain controller if you're using Active Directory. So I'll click Continue here, and it just so happens I have a Windows 7 32-bit virtual machine already installed on my ESXi host. I'm going to select it here. Uh, the name is Windows 7 32-bit and the new image name that we'll call it once we create um, a template from this will be VDI box dash win 7 dash 1 and I'll just call this golden win 7 32-bit image for VDI in box. I'll click import here all right, and we're creating our new VDI in a box virtual machine. Uh, it'll take just a few minutes here. Okay, we're back. Our virtual machine has successfully been cloned, and now we're to the point where we need to install the desktop agent on the virtual machine. This is just a little um, application that runs on every virtual machine in the desktop virtual infrastructure, which allows the virtual machines to communicate their status back to the connection broker. So it wants us to connect via RDP to this virtual machine and then copy this link into the browser URL so we can install the desktop agent. Let's go ahead and click connect here to do that. Here on the virtual machine desktop, I'll go ahead and open up my web browser. And then from here, I can paste in that URL. We'll accept the security certificate here. And then it says we need to install the desktop agent. Make sure that this virtual machine is a member of the correct domain or workgroup. Also make sure that the Windows firewall is either not running or these ports have been specifically opened. And then finally make sure that remote desktop access is enabled for the users who will be accessing this virtual machine. So I'll go ahead and click install here to install the desktop agent 32-bit version. I'll click to run the application. And here we go. It says, welcome to the Citrix VDI in a box desktop agent setup wizard. 
I'll click next here and click install. Okay, it says the VDI in a box desktop agent installed successfully. I'll click OK. And then I'll click finish and we'll automatically launch the agent. Okay, and when we did that, it kicked us off. It actually logged us out of the remote desktop connection. And now we're back here in our administrative console. And you can see it says now it's waiting for the protocol. So it's connecting to the new virtual desktop. And let's give it just a second. Okay, with our agent successfully installed, now we need to download the Citrix receiver here to be able to test the desktop that we just created. So I'm going to click here to download the Citrix receiver from Citrix.com. My platform is Microsoft Windows. And then I'll click here to download for web access. With the Citrix receiver installation completed here, I'll say OK. And now let's go back. And we completed step one for testing to make sure the receiver is installed. Now let's test HDX port, which is TCP 1494 on this image. I'll click test. And you can see our test succeeded and we can now move to the next step. And the next step is to edit the image. So in other words, what we're going to do here is we have a working virtual machine. We want this to be the golden image for all the end users to connect to. Uh, in other words, their desktop will be cloned off of this image. So not only do we want the operating system ready to go, we also want applications to be installed on the image. Of course, it's optional just to test desktop virtualization. But in production, let's say you would install Microsoft Office, you would install maybe QuickBooks. Um, what other applications your end users use to do their job would be installed at this point. So connecting to the virtual machine and installing applications is optional. But we do have to view and verify the following information is accurate. So I'm going to click View here. And it says, do you have a valid Microsoft license key? Yes, we do. Are remote connections enabled for remote users? Yes. Are group policies configured to allow remote desktop connections? and HDX. Yes. Are all services that might interfere with the desktop generation process disabled, such as automatic Windows update, screensavers, endpoints, and other antivirus services? To be honest, I haven't double-checked all of that at this point, but then again, this is just a demonstration in a lab environment. So in production, you want to make sure you check all these things. For my purposes, I'm just going to say yes here. It says here, is the VMware SVGA 3D display adapter uninstalled. So you want to make sure that you uninstall that display adapter and then restart the virtual machine. I'll say yes. Is the USB controller added through the VMware vSphere client? I'll say yes. And is your machine fully up to date with Windows Update? I'll say yes. Of course, in production, you want to make sure all these things are done. For the purposes of this demonstration, uh, I really, to be honest, I just said yes and uh, didn't double check all of these. But I'll say done here because I really want to show off what VDI in a box can do for you. So I'll click Next. And at this point, we need to prepare our image, as they call it. So we need to enter the domain name. In this case, it's the Wirebrain Coffee Company. We need to enter the administrator username and password here, as well as the domain password. The organizational unit is optional. I'll select the Eastern Time Zone. Let me scroll down here. Uh, we'll take the default computer name prefix. We'll use the uh, local administrator's profile as the default profile. We'll use a Mac key instead of a KMS key for Windows license activation. And then we can just click prepare here. And I'll click confirm. And this will take just a few minutes to prepare the desktop. So I'm going to pause the recording and I'll be right back. Now that we've prepared our desktop image, now it's time to test it out and verify our end user experience. We want to make sure that the end users will get the desktop that we want them to have, that their applications will be installed and working, that their profile personalizations will work, and that they can access their desktops via the desired remote protocols we want them to use, such as Citrix HDX or Microsoft RDP. So now I'm going to click Connect. And I'll take the default here to connect via Citrix HDX using the Citrix receiver that we installed. 
I'm going to log in as an Active Directory test user that I created named Bob, bob at widebraincoffee.com, and type in his password and click login. And there we go, we successfully logged in as Bob. If I go to the computer's properties here, we can see this is an Intel Xeon 5520 CPU. Um, actually, that's the CPU type of the uh, physical server where I'm running VMware vSphere. Uh, it says we have 4 gigs of RAM installed. However, that's actually 4 gigs of virtual RAM because, as you can see down here by the computer's name, this is the virtual desktop that was automatically created when we prepared our image. You can tell by the um, automatically created computer prefix there, VDI 900C. Now, if we were testing this out for production, of course, we would want to go in here and make sure that all the programs the end users need are already installed, make sure they can customize uh, their desktop, personalize it, whatever it is that you want them to be able to do, they need to be able to do. But we did prove that we can successfully connect to a desktop in the VDI in a box infrastructure running on top of VMware vSphere using Citrix HDX or the Citrix receiver. So with that, let's go back to the administrative console for VDI in a box and see what else we need to do. All right, now that we've imported the image, installed the agent, tested the connection, edited the image, prepared the image, and tested the image, let's click Save on the image. Now it says that this will save the prepared image and distribute the saved image to other servers in the grid. However, since I only have one server in my grid so far, uh, it shouldn't be propagating that saved image to any other server at this point. Of course, if you wanted high availability or you needed more scalability, you would be adding more than one server in your grid. So I'll click Confirm here, and it's going to go through the process of shutting down the virtual machine and getting it ready for end users to connect. Okay, we went from number one to number two in the setup here. Now we're at number three, which is create desktop templates from the base image. To do this, we'll enter the names and descriptions for the templates. We'll specify how many user desktops we want to create, as well as refresh policies for the user desktops. I'll click continue here, and then we're going to give this template a name. I'm calling it VDI box win7 template1. We'll be using the image that we've been working with so far. We'll need to give this a description. We'll call this template for Win7 Test Lab with VDI in a box. We'll take the default memory of one gig and click Next. The maximum number of desktops that we're going to have, let's say, is four. And I'd like to have two pre-started desktops. I'll click Save here. The template has been saved successfully. I'll click Close. And now we're ready to assign some users to our desktops. So I'll click Continue here. So now we needed to find either user groups, users, or IP addresses that can access our virtual desktop infrastructure, and specifically certain templates, like the templates we just created. So I'm going to define a user group. And for the purposes of the demo here, I'll just call it All AD Users. And then for the template, We'll select the VDI in a box Win7 template 1, say close there, and let's say save. And then we need to define either user groups, users, or IP addresses. Now I could define Active Directory user groups here, uh, or specific Active Directory users. Let's go ahead and give that a try. I'm just going to uh, say that the user ID is Bob, that's the test user we used, and I'm going to define that uh, he can access the template we've been working with. So I'll say save here and now Bob should be able to access uh, the new virtual desktop that we created. Maybe you want to set up a group of Active Directory users or maybe all users uh, who need access to their virtual desktops as a group here and authorize them for specific templates. With our user configured let's go to the desktops tab here and see if we're ready to test this out with our real end user uh, using our new cloned templates uh, that are up and running or should be up and running in our VMware virtual infrastructure. So take a look here on the desktops tab. First off you've got the capacity, the capacity running, uh, the additional capacity of the desktops that haven't been started for the maximum number of users, and then the total capacity uh, based on just the single server 
that I have currently in my lab infrastructure. Here you see the template that we created. If you look here on the right, we've got a maximum number of four virtual desktops that we want uh, end users to be able to connect to. Then we've got two that we wanted to be automatically started and ready to be connected to at any point. Then on the right here, moving over, we've got um, one desktop that says it's new. Uh, new means that it's ready to go. And then one that's still in the process of starting. So at this point, we should be able to test this out. Let's say that I'm an end user and I want to connect to my VDI in a box virtual desktop. There's actually multiple ways to do it. So uh, if you don't like the way I'm going to show you, there's other options you can try. Uh, but one way is just to point your web browser to the IP address here of the VDI in a box server. And then you log in as the end user. In my case, I'll log in as Bob. And then since I only have one desktop, I'm automatically connected to that desktop. Since I'm using Firefox here, it pops up a little message I have to say OK on. And then there we go. That's my desktop. It comes up super fast, to be honest with you. I'm really impressed. And then it automatically logs on using Bob's Active Directory uh, username and password. And there we go. There's my desktop. I can go to the Start menu here, and I should have all my applications as an end user. And things look good to go. If we go over to the vSphere client, let's check out the virtual machines that were created thanks to VDI in a box. Here in the vSphere client, of course, we've got the original VDI in a box virtual machine that we deployed to make this host as part of the VDI in a box grid. And then we've got three VDI in a box uh, Windows 7 virtual machines here. These are managed by the VDI in a box uh, virtual machine. So with that, let's go back to the VDI in a box console. So that concludes the initial setup and installation of VDI in a box. We went through the process of creating images, templates. Uh, we assigned users. We installed the desktop agent. We installed the Citrix receiver. And then we assigned a user and tested it with an Active Directory user. That concludes my installation video. And uh, stay tuned for more videos uh, from David Davis and TrainSignal on administering Citrix VDI in a box. Thanks for watching.